McKay uh, is my third child and my last. Um, he's my baby. And you know, by the time you have your third child, you know how long the ultrasound sonographer should look at everything. And, and finally, I just looked at her and I said, I know you can't tell me what's wrong, but what are you looking at? And she just said his heart. So our trip for McKay's third surgery um, was his first ride on an airplane. McKay's first few days out of surgery were rough. I mean, it was intensive care and it's 24 hour one-on-one -on -one nurses and doctors checking in very frequently. Um, you learn to kind of know who's at the door of your hospital room by the knock that you hear. And uh, you know, soft knocks, those are doctors. Those are people that are there to help you and heal you and that want to come in and, and make things better and really noisy, loud knocks that are happening mid-door opening, that was the custodial staff. And man, my husband and I had had enough um, with those loud barging in knocks. And so um, every time the door opened, his little lip would start to quiver and he would look at us panicked and tell he could see who came around the door. And he's, he, uh, he was nervous and rightfully so. He had his surgery on a Friday, we made it through the weekend. By Monday morning, my husband and I had decided that we were gonna sit vigil at the door. And no one was gonna knock, and no one was gonna barge, and we were gonna be his gatekeepers and his protectors. It was early on a Monday morning, and my husband and I heard a soft knock at our hospital room door, and so we both shot straight up because soft knocks were healers. Those were people we wanted to invite in to take a good look at McKay and to tell us what we could expect for the rest of the day. Well, when my husband got to the door, he greeted um, a very soft-spoken man in bright blue scrubs, and we were so confused because we'd never had a custodian come to our room that had knocked that way or had not entered on his own. And he said, good morning, my name's Moses, and I'm here to help you welcome the day. Can I come in? It was interesting because the first time he entered the room, he didn't rush over to the garbage can that was next to McKay's bed. That's what always made my son so upset, is when people would rush toward him because he didn't know if they were coming for him or you know, coming to do something to him. Um, I just remember that first morning, Moses stood at the foot of his bed and introduced himself to McKay like he was an actual person. He was the first man in four days that spoke to my child like a child. And that meant so much to me because no one was looking at him like a person. He was a patient and he was a project and they were there to fix him. But Moses wanted to help him. And uh, just the most unexpected of, of greetings. And you could see McKay visibly relax. His shoulders relaxed, his little lips stopped quivering. And um, Moses moved really softly to the side of his bed and picked up the garbage can and emptied it just like everyone else had done, but in such a different way that it, um, it, it just made an impression. And he moved around the room that day and just spoke little wisdoms as he moved around the room about cleaning out yesterday and starting fresh today and telling McKay, oh, you're looking stronger. You know, you're gonna play today. You're gonna sit up today. Tomorrow, you're gonna eat. Moses is here to help. Moses is here to make it all better. You look just fine today, getting stronger by the minute, aren't you? You're strong, you're brave. You've been through a lot, but you're getting through it. Your body knows just what to do now. Just rest and let it do it. That's right, those cartoons will make you feel better. You'll be eating soon. Just wait, I know you can do it. Today is a new day. Look better, smell better, feel better. The thing I think I love most about his voice, it was just full of encouragement. And um, he seemed really deeply competent. Like he'd, he'd been there a while and he saw these kids come and go. I do think that Moses saw himself as part of the healing team, you know, as critical, as important as doctors and nurses, not because um, they expressed that kind of regard for him, but because he understood the impact that he could have. And every day, Monday through Friday, two times a day, we looked forward to him coming in and the contrast between how he served our needs and how others in his same position um, did their jobs on the weekends was just could not have been more black and white and we so appreciate the difference that he made in our experience. Man, we were tired, we were exhausted. It had been a long three weeks. I just remember putting my head back on the headrest of the airplane and he was asleep in my arms and I just thought, I have so many people I need to say thank you to. Where do I start? And I was so surprised that the first person that came to my mind was Moses. Don't, don't you think the surgeon? Don't you think the nurse that got him through that first night? But not for me. 
For me, it was the man who talked to us like we were people there with our baby. But it was Moses who treated us like a person and gave me encouragement on those days when I had real fears and doubts and didn't know if my child was going to walk out with us or not.